and a man of Alberta. Affectionately called Archie the Senior on Fidget. The whole issue. Archie the Senior. Yes, please. Fidget from 97.5 to the children. Your Excellency, thank you very much for this opportunity. Since independence, driving through from Tama to Kumasi and then to Muna East. Through to your hometown Wally and then to Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso. This region has never experienced very well. And we have heavy tracks cutting loose from Tema due to these towns I have mentioned. Within two years of resetting Ghana, what specific promise are you making to this region? And by far in extension, people using that stretch of road because I apply that road a lot. And we have huge potholes. If I'm permitted, I'll say marbles. What will you do? Will you let this bridge also see a railway line through to the northern region? Thank you very much. All right, sir. My name is Abdul Rahman Shai from BBC Radio in Tampa. Your Excellency, respectfully, I know you are fully aware of the distractions and how polluted our water bodies have become. I want to find out from you what is your strategy. How do you intend to fight that I'm saying? Can you also make a commitment, a promise to the good people of this country that the next NDC governments led by you would fight that I'm saying heaven will not Spare any appointee in your government who would engage in the whole thing. Finally, is it also true that the future NDC government will throw away the licensing of teachers? Okay, thank you. License, license of teachers. Okay. Okay. Mr. President, I am in the back of the I am in the south of the I don't know if you share more than one. I'm still in the south of the south. Five <laughs> For now, we have the roads, and we need to make sure 
that the road network is good in order that we can transport passengers and goods freely across our country. We've been building roads, I mean, in NBC times, we've built a lot of roads. I mean, the various overlays, we pay Tamale. The problem over the last eight years I have noticed is that government is interested in only building new roads. They're not interested in maintaining the existing roads. And so, once you build a road, Definitely, with time, some potholes will appear on the roads. And so every year, when we're in office, we did what we call routine maintenance. And so we get small routine maintenance contracts to small-scale contractors. And you see them with a Kia truck, with some chippings in and some gravel. They go and fill the pothole. They have this compactor. They ramp it, then they pour the chippings on and then they use this watering can to pour the bitumen on it. We used to do it every year. And so while they're building new roads, the existing roads are also maintained and are more traveled. Unfortunately, this government has abandoned a lot of the roads, and so a small portfolio develops. And you know the kind of big trucks that are using our roads, this, uh, this uh, currently. They hit the portal and it widens and it widens and it widens and eventually becomes what you yourself describe as a manhole. And so we're going to restore routine maintenance. This government even they don't know that you must cut the grass at the side of the roads. And so sometimes you go and you see a bituminous road, the grass has taken half of one side and half of another side. And these are complex you give to the inner voice, voice points. Small small contract, they'll go with cutlasses and they just read the sides of the road. But unfortunately, I don't know what has happened to our roads ministry under the MPP administration. Maintenance of existing road neck work has been very poor. Their main interest is to give contracts for new roads. And so that's something that we would reverse. Every year in our time, when the rate subsides, you suddenly see contractors on the road filling the potholes and things. And once you fill them, the road is able to last the following year. And so we'll start routine maintenance of roads again while we build the new roads. But with railways, we have a master plan for the railways. And um, every government has had an intention to build the railways. But you must build the railways and have a return on the investment. In the past, what we've tried to do is for government to borrow and use the money to build the railways. We're going to take a different approach. We're going to use the private sector, either under PPPs or under BOTs. PPPs are public private partnerships. BOTs are build, operate, and transfer. And so we're going to involve the private sector. We're going to advertise it open and transparent and ask for partners who want to join us to build the railways and will cost how much it is to build each segment of the line and if we get a private partner who builds the railway we will escrow the revenue from the railway into our account and we will know how many years it will take to recoup the investment and so that private partner will run the railway for the number of years that it will take to recoup its investment with interest. I think that that is the fastest way for us to build the railways. We have several segments of it. We got the money to build the Tema Akosumbu rail line, which is now the Tema Pakadan rail. Of course, this government came and continued. It was an Indian Exim Bank that I got for that rail line. We did the secondly Takari Kudokrum stretch of the rail line so that we could use it as an urban rail line to bring passengers to and from secondly Takari to Kudokrum. Unfortunately, since we left, the trains have stopped running and that segment of track is abandoned. This government has started the segment from Takari to Hawasu because Hawasu has oxide mining. 
and manganese. But we need that green light to come all the way to Ilehim so that we can mine the bauxite in Ilehim. If we're able to get the green light into Ashanti, then it is easy to stretch it from there across the Brunga Afro region to Habile. Because the industrial town of Burkina Faso is on the western side that is Bogotu Faso. And so a lot of the traffic that is coming through here is not going to Wagadulu, it's actually going to Bogotu Faso. And that's why you see on the Techiman Bonne Habile Road, a lot of the trucks are passing that way because they're going to Bogotu Faso and then those going to Bamako don't want to go through Bagan. If they go through Hamile, they cut their journey by almost 200 kilometers. And so that route is very important and profitable. And so if we can do a container terminal on our border at Hamile, then it means that we can take containers and other goods that are heading to Burkina Faso and Mali through that rail line to Hamile and put the containers there, they can come and clear their goods from there instead of bringing their trucks all the way down south. And so that's one of the wishes we have, but we we'll need a private partner to be able to do it. In the current debt crisis in which we are, and the current you know, um, overboring that we have done, um, Ghana is not going to be able to go into the international capital market until about 2027. 2028. So we need to start being innovative about how we are able to do our infrastructure. But under the big push, the railways are a part of our thinking. We are also looking at the eastern line that will come from Tema to Wakra to bring containers there uh, from Tema to Wakra. Right now, they are building the inland port, but what purpose is an inland port when you don't have the railway line? Already the importers in Broca Afro and Kumasi, for whom that inland terminal is supposed to sell, put their containers on accumulated tracks and bring them to Kumasi or to Accra or to Sunyani or wherever. And so, if you build an inland port, they are going to use accumulators to carry their containers, come and offload the container again and put it there, and then you come and then just load the container again on a truck. You'd rather go to them and load once and bring it straight to his yard. So the money government is which your market at the moment without a railway line. That's not make any sense. Because people are not going to use it. The thing about shipping and transporting of goods is to avoid double handling. And so if I go to Tema and they load my container, I don't want you to come and charge me for floating in that Mwakra. And then when I come and load it on a truck again, you charge me again. So I'd rather go to tell my pick my thing and bring it straight to my shop or to my yard. And so the line from Tema to Wanda is what will make that inland port operational. And so we need to look for a partner who will put in that rail line and make it easier to bring that uh, cargo to Wanda. Um, when you tell what someone is in the fight against them, it's a very complicated fight, and I don't underestimate it. I've been president before. We used the army and police to chase the Galaxy boys, and we failed. I mean, it was yielding no resolve, so I called off the army and called off the police, and I said that we must find more innovative ways of dealing with the menace. Recently, we launched our manifesto, and we've indicated some of the things that we must do. One, I made a commitment that we'll stop giving permits to mining companies to mine in forest areas, forest reserves, because you notice that our climate is changing. This year, the rains have failed us, and I'm a farmer myself. Uh, the rains were not falling. And I have planted. Luckily, I have irrigation equipment. And so when I saw it that it wasn't raining and the plants were under stress, I rolled up the irrigation equipment and started, you know, uh, uh, irrigating until the rains came. That is me because I can afford it. One of the poor farmers who cannot afford that irrigation equipment. 
and relies on rainfall for this product. We will consider the rate that we are cutting the forest. The time will come when we will not be able to produce enough food to be able to feed ourselves. And so thanks for my stop giving permits for mining and forest reserves. We must reclaim the forest. We have a lot of young boys who are into the country. We are going to employ them to grow trees rather instead of going to take to grow the forest reserves. And so we we'll pay them a stipend, we we'll give them wellington boots, we we'll give them dry cycles, and let them grow the trees. They're not going to plant trees, we're not tree planting, tree growing. And so they go and plant the trees and they will visit the trees and make sure that the trees are surviving. And during the dry season, when the trees are stressed, they will have their own way out the pocket tanks to go and put water on the trees so that the trees uh, survive. <coughs> With regards to the water bodies, polluted water bodies, there are two types of pollution. One is those who divert the water, they need the water to wash the boat. So they divert the stream or the river and then they bring it onto their mining site or they use water pumps and pump the water onto their mining site. Now they do two things. They either take a deep pit and then they wash the gold with the water into the pit. So by the time they leave, there's a huge pit full of water that is polluted. Or they wash the gold and wash the sand and the and mud associated with it back into the river to take out the gold. That is one category. But there's another category who are on the river with their sulfur machines and they're scooping the bottom of the river and washing the gold and pumping the mud and dirt back into the river. So that's a problem with the pollution of our river bodies. Now, I think that the poison of our water bodies and the washing of all kinds of things in there is not worth the good that we get out of it. There are many places in this world where they have gold in the riverbed, but they have banned any mining on the riverbed because they want to keep the environment unpolluted. We have to make a choice as a country. Unfortunately, because of the unbridled nature of Galante and the fact that the laws are not being enforced, we become the biggest exporter of gold. I think last year we did 135,000 tons. We used to do 80,000 tons. And so we're doing 135,000 tons. And now, because this government has pretended over the collapse of the cocoa sector, and they've also not made any investments in oil and gas, our oil and gas production has fallen by 32%. So gold is the only thing that is holding this country now. And so, if we enforce the laws and we stop that some of our gold production will come down, but at what expense, we must consider the opportunity cost of our environment and the opportunity cost of employment and generating foreign currency to be able to build that infrastructure. That is a choice we have to make. But we are saying that the laws exist. The problem is with implementation. And so we're going to identify every mining district. Every district in which mining takes place. There will be an office of the implementation of the agency. Everybody who has a small scale concession will have officers from the Minerals Commission who are young graduates from the University of Mines and Technology. They will be with you on the small scale mine. Every day when they get up, they're coming to where your small scale mine is and making sure that you're doing the right thing. If we supervise and implement properly, I'm sure that we will get less destruction of our environment. But we must also let those who have the small scale mining concessions put some of the money down in the reclamation bond. And so every day when you every month you take some of the money, you put it down. Every month you take some of the money, you put it down. When you finish, use your machines 
and level the ground nicely and then we'll give you uh, seedlings and you plant the seedlings on the land and then the money you put down will give your money to you and you go away if you don't do it and you go away then that money that you used to do that you should pay while doing the mining we will use it to pay the companies that are going to be formed to do reclamation we are going to encourage Ghanaian companies to specialize in how to reclaim land and so when you finish, if you don't reclaim the land, we'll call in one of those companies to come and level the ground, to plant the seedlings and look after the seedlings and that money that you left, we'll give it to them in payment for the work that they are doing. So that's the issue with um, Galaxy. We said we're going to abolish licensure exams. Teachers will still be licensed, but their licensing process will be made part of their final year in college of education. So in their final year, they will do their licensing and at the same time do their qualification for their degree uh, in education. And so they will come out with two certificates. One will be their degree for finishing the course in college of education. And the second one will be their teacher's license. And so they will get it at the point of departure from school so that they don't have to come sit at home, apply again to go and write exams based on which they will be licensed. So that process will be added as part of their final year program in school so that they just come out as licensed uh, teachers. Um, and said, Sikana, every person on the 
on the Dubai World Secondary Schools, near educational institutions in the normal math contract does not come back to site. Now, on my call, PM term, no more days are protected. And no more days, it's media and media, and then what we have done is our problem tracking. Because when we have been able to do that, we have been able to do that. And when we have been able to do that, we have been able to do that in the school. This is a big thing. Na ebi kusuku na ebi yako na ebi yapa. Iblo si se get fun the project get fun projects. It is a sense kind of bad. The best projects in India the best be a big term. The big school ba the be an kada ni fee a bano. Home need no metric block. It is an kada ni fee fee the be a common set the be a normal school. It is a most you be identify sa iblo si. Need si students who sells account. Send away a Padan Vedia Vediata. Now, it's me, sir, now a Padan Vedia 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 yeah, main a focus say the back of it one, and it's a the measure of projects in the aka and room. Now, it's a couple of clear one, yeah, the agent needs to be. And many this year, all of them are proper and final school because we need to say they are all on their own contract. It's not a contract that he used to want. A bank of a buyer, I want to say. Only I know we will do one thing, and I find that that one, that same person, and I'm going to say contract the eight one, or find us one. And the other day, say yeah, yeah, find me in here, and they will say a buyer, a buyer, or a trust one. And go be now my business say, and see now what we, I come in first half find us one in here, and so I feel me who say contract the most with the India or here. Bring the award for a baby, then a major contract that you so bad. We share a juma aka. Now we so be a sa aka. Obu onti bimi. And if more yes is say go, we we want to hear say. Yes, you are the kind of sa na manasa. And the Andrea, the other sa, and the person we share contract now, I'm on the way. And the Bakase say ba. The other sa contract we have. Enjoying the demand for consent, and we will we will also be contractors in the house of the investigative answer. And Omar apprehended that it's the idea of contracting here for the age one, sending to the Mabu, surviving the Mabu, or the travel to us. You will share the Kavia and Dabo. The only thing is, some of the contracts are our value, but yet, as a time, we will do an independent audit the value for money. To make sure, say, Sika will be at final, and the right amount. Now, say, a poor, maybe we'll negotiate with you. But then, that's what we'll be on the final day to control. We'll be able to also elevate to my celebrity here in the other thing. You see, and maybe, I'm proud, and if you have one more, and you buy it, and we'll see, sir.